City and boarded our houses in the country, so I really didn't learn a whole lot aside uh, from bailing hay and those things. Right. About the ki everyday care. Ki yeah. And so, if it when it comes to owning your own, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd be as, as yeah. Oh, you. We get yeah. Very excited Here we go. About our sensory trail. Um, right now, everyone's just enjoying the time that they're having out here. Uh, we have two wooden bridges. Just the sensation of going up and going down is a learning experience, and a lot of trunk usage for the student because they lean into the bridge so they lean forward and then they lean back and they really tighten themselves up going up the bridge as you can see right there yep. there you go for alec and he's brand new that's his first night here the little bridge is a little more advanced because the sidewalkers are on the outside of the rails so they're not as close to you so sometimes that's a big challenge for the students and some of the students will say oh i'm not ready for the little bridge yet i want those sidewalkers close but the big bridge is made for the whole team to go over all nice and close together. But it's a, it's a good slant. These two bridges were made by um, Alex Arndt and he, as a Boy Scout project, an Eagle Scout project. You should have seen the cool way they were delivered in a big truck. They built them on the truck and delivered them there. Yeah. So they're, that's this really fun project that they did for us. Um, down below we have, I, did you want to walk over there? <laughs> From bridge to bridge, kind of down below we have our actual sensory trail the path and uh, it's a lot of work to maintain it too so right now um, from a distance you don't see it as much but when you're walking through it uh, the, the sensation is is great we start out going down this little moly hill i call them moguls because i used to see them that was a real fun <laughs> this hill right here has a few bumps on it so we go down here and that's a lot of careful stepping and careful walking and the horse isn't walking in their normal stride because of the feeling of the hill on the way down. So that's the first thing they start out with off to the, after the bridge. Then we have a pile of wood chips They go through that. There's a, a sound and a feeling and the horse changes their gait as each type of footing changes. 
and then we just go through a grassy area and then we have some stepping stones that are sunken into the ground. We always go over this very slowly. Of course, it's a practice out here. And they step the stepping stones quite deliberately so their strides change. And when the strides change, that's really good for the students because then they're they're having to adjust and use different muscles and balance differently. And the speed changes too. And that's one thing we haven't talked about is that speed is also something that changes, you know. edging that was done on, on this path too and if we get the weed whacker out here before next week then the rest of the classes for this session will have a kind of a bright looking little trail here. The, the rock and here a comes lot of noise. Claudia. A lot of the students respond to the noise of the horses as they go through the pea rock. It makes a great sound. Uh, the sawdust is very very soft and quiet. So Lynn, she's doing a good job sitting up straight like you were talking yes, about. Yes, she is. That's yeah. one of the things you're focusing on with her. And if you notice, she's using reins this year. She's holding on to reins, which is, again, she has to use even better balance for that. There she goes. And as you can see, the gait pattern of the horse changes, and therefore she has to adjust herself to that. Step, step, there we go. The, the kids love walking over the, the ground poles over there. We just have old logs. They actually had a bunch of little children paint them white for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, last summer, yeah. So it's just a, a different way for the horse to walk. And the student says, step, step, and they learn when the front end of their horse is positioned over the log. And then the, the voice command from the student to the horse kind of brings a trust. The horse begins to realize that the student is, knows exactly where they are, when they're there, and they start to trust the little kids more. Um, you know, they don't have all the other riding aids that some sure. horseback riding, you know, people have. So, so where's Claudia going now? What do you call that? Okay. The with the tires, the tire our tunnel. obstacle course, yeah. Gonna go, I think she's going to go up the tire tunnel first. We have tire the tunnel. The tire tunnel, yeah. <laughs> we have tire this is a therapeutic the word. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it is a sensory sensation to go into a tunnel where you feel enclosed for a bit. Uh, sometimes, depending on the sunshine, it's, it's an extra beautiful place to go. The sun comes from the west and comes in through the trees and through the tires. There are uh, eight hanging tires, and then there's the... Um, six standing tire towers. So, there's a bird bath at the bottom of okay? Sometimes if we're doing a game or a treasure hunt, we'll give them directions. You know, go down the tire tunnel to the bird bath, or go up the tire tunnel. So, and here she goes up the small bridge you were yeah. talking about. Well, you can that's see that that's, that's a bit of a challenge there. She did good. We also have the bells in the trees. I haven't seen anyone go over to the bell. Oh, they're no. playing the um, ball game. That can be as little or big of a challenge as the team makes it. So we've had some sidewalkers decide that the boys had to dismount and go pick up all their own balls <laughs> and then remount. Right. So uh, sometimes the team decides that they can challenge the team a little bit more. So. Sometimes our sidewalkers will rotate the tire <laughs> to check their timing, and it can really swing. So. so this is Joe riding on Marit. His little brother is Alex, and uh, when they called, they asked if Joe could ride too. So we've just met them tonight for the first time. They seem to be enjoying themselves. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And the other thing, we sometimes have students who are not only physically disabled, but we can have children with hearing impairments or vision impairments. And we find this to be very good for that, too. Um, 
especially like the bells that nobody has done oh, today. We'll but have to go over there. We'll have, to have, to go over there. We'll have to. You can see we use primary colors like um, the red, blue, and yellow barrels. Yes. You know, the, um, we're, we're setting up new things all the time. So we have these old stumps, and we cut them in the shape of a chair, and now we'll paint them purple. So now we'll have some games that we'll make up, we'll make up for the royal court, you know. We'll just come up with do, new things all the time that the kids can ride around and ride through or play games on. Very yeah, cool. It's very fun. So we have a lot of different people helping with the creativity. And do you get these ideas from programs that are already established? Are they own, your own ideas or a little of both? Maybe a little of both. A little both, yeah. We did learn about a sensory trail concept at Inara conference, and they had some PVC things that were built. And we happened to have an area, a half acre pasture fence next to our arena that is so perfect, we were able to put in things that are more nature related, more natural, more like a trail ride. And I, I love it. I just love it. So we, um, <laughs> we've used things that could have been junk. Up there we have a, a little hitching post from years ago that was um, bent and it, we buried it into the ground and made it into in the horse in the summertime it's made into a little horse <laughs> it's a horse head and a tail um, we borrowed the picnic table to put it over there for an event but we'll bring the picnic table back and then there, there'll be the little hitching post of the horse and the picnic table and we're working on a little mountain ramp there that we had from someone's old trailer house so you can see we're always always doing new things out here and does the type of horse you use depend um, does the type of horse you use make a difference as to how effective the therapy is? Certainly. Okay. It very much does. Um, we, of course, have to use the horses we have. Sure. <laughs> but when we find a horse who has an extra nice movement, um, Ginger, the little pony that Claudia's on, has a very, very nice movement. A lot of a lot of movement. <laughs> right. What do you call this? Yeah. <laughs> Lateral flexion. Yes, of, it's yeah. great. It's great. What and about can, are they quarter horses or thoroughbreds or what are they? You know, each individual horse. It does, you know, the breed, it does not matter nearly as much as the actual movement of the horse. That's if you're looking for hippotherapy, we technically don't do hippotherapy, but we certainly have a lot of benefits here that you would find in hippotherapy. And we do have Lynn and other therapists working with us, and they helping us see that movement, doing an extra good job at seeing it. And we get, um, we have videotapes and other resources where we study a little bit and decide what kind of horses are giving us the best movement. Sure. Hello, <laughs> Eloise is just bobbing through there. <laughs> oh, uh -oh, that look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> the, the tack can also help. The saddles can help. So we love, we love the kind of saddles that we have. The soft saddles. We get close contact to the horse, and we they get the best translation from the horse movement to the body. And with the soft saddle, since there's no hard tree underneath them, the muscle movement from the horse's back. Can even translate to the thighs and buttocks, so that's an, an extra and the warmth and the warmth of being close to the horse. Yeah. yeah. And what other types of adaptive equipment do you have? We use sur singles, vaulting sur singles, to provide a place for handles with the soft saddles when they're when that's useful. Um, Ginger's using something that was made by a company called Freedom Rides specifically for therapeutic riding. This is a very nice handle for her to hold on to, and it's a soft. There's no tree. So it's a form of a soft saddle. Uh, we use, oh, the colored rainbow reins. That can help us to get their hands in the right position. We'll tell one of the students, hang on to the red part of your reins when we go to back up the horse. And that will really help the students to know to move the reins up closer and get a tighter grip on them. And the stirrups. The stirrups are all safety stirrups. Our program doesn't ride with anything but safety stirrups. It's either no stirrups or safety stirrups. That way, we do not have to kind of police the kind of footwear that they have, and we feel that the, the safety stirrups are safer than um, than someone's own boots. Anyway, a, they, a boot with a heel is considered fairly safe that your foot won't get stuck in a stirrup, but the safety stirrups are even safer. So we just said that's what we're going with. Mm. Alec is riding with no stirrups today. And we certainly don't have to ride with stirrups, and it depends on what we're doing. And today, we're mostly just getting the kids used to the horses, and so don't worry about putting stirrups on. What other type of diagnoses are represented here tonight with your students? We heard about cerebral palsy. Uh, we, well, in our earlier class, we had a child with autism. Uh, we have some children with just mental retardation, pretty severe mental retardation. Um, uh, this young man. I just 
hydrocephalus. Um, and let me think. We do have children with Down syndrome. What, not, we don't have one in this class, but we have a lot of children with Down syndrome. And we have some children with spina bifida. I'm, yep. And we have some other syndromes. We, we do have rare, some syndromes, yeah. That are, yeah um, you know, so I read about them a little bit when we get the diagnosis right. and we get the medical information. But yeah, right. some of them are more rare. Who well, do you get the medical information from? Directly from the doctor? Um, and know? the parents. Okay. So yeah. the parents will fill out all the medical information on a form and have the doctor review it. Or the doctor may fill in the whole form himself, depending on how the parents want to do it. But then the doctor reviews it and signs it that that's all the medical information that they have about that student. So we get full information about their diagnosis. Right. Right. We even do medical information on children, or all of our students, even the ones who have no diagnosis. So. And we do see some children, I guess, ADHD children. Yep, ADHD, um, learning disability. Uh, we had one that had a diagnosis of too shy. <laughs> <laughs> and that little girl screamed louder and was more difficult for her first ride out here than any child we've ever had. <laughs> too shy. Too shy. And she quickly, that's what her mother wanted, was the social interaction, and it quickly helped. So. And she had horses. She wasn't afraid of horses. It was yeah. the social environment that made yeah. her so afraid. So we see a little bit of everything. Every day, <laughs> yep. I can see that. Yeah. So what a beautiful facility you have. Yeah. Oh, good. We're going to the bell tree. You want to take pictures over there? Yeah, you know, I think <laughs> you, we're good. we have good on questions and yep. everything. Okay. So I might, just, of, of I might just walk around and, and okay. try to get some different shots. Really okay, awesome. so sure. Do you want my... If you want, yeah, I can yeah. take that back. That way when I need to Thank <laughs> you. 